I don't know what to do. I don't know what I can do. Can I even do anything? Reed's been out for a week straight at this point. There's nothing from the forest investigation. Beatley's been on my case about wrapping up the story. I feel so... Not... Helpless, but... Useless. Every step of the way, I feel like I've been an inconvenience to everyone around me. All I do is ask questions and get in the way. I haven't solved anything. I haven't found anything useful. I just remind people of the bad things that have happened. Reed's family has been with him at the hospital since the night of the accident. I haven't gone back yet. I feel... I feel guilty about it somehow. I could have gotten there sooner. I could have not interviewed him at all. To them, I'm just the nosy outsider who painted a possible supernatural target on the back of one of the village's most respected educators. <sighs> Listen to me talk about it as if it wasn't just some freak accident. There's no such thing as the supernatural, Martin. Just terrible people, like me, that influence other people's lives in bad ways. The sheriff requested a duplicate of that night's tape, I don't know what he expects to find. I haven't listened back, but I'm pretty sure it was all just stress. Right? It had to be. Beatley called in my motel room this morning. Sounded more mad than usual. Told me I had two weeks to turn in something substantial, or, or else, well... The staff box will be one name shorter come next month. I don't blame him. He's just doing his job. Unlike me. I probably spent more time chasing down these fairy tales than giving you useful information. I honestly don't know where to go from here. I'm lost. I feel like I'm just spending my days... Floating through life here. Same routine. Bothering the same folks. Asking the same questions. I talked to Maria about it a bit. She tried to tell me I wasn't a bother. But I know a white lie when I hear one. All she can see when she talks to me is someone who reminds her of what happened to her son. And she's not mad. No, she pities me. They all do. I'm just the poor reporter who got stuck with a depressing story to them. At least, that's what my brain tells me. I know it's not true. It can't be. But there's just no fighting the feeling. It's like my mind wants me to feel helpless and lost. I don't enjoy this feeling, but it keeps telling me that I have to because it's the truth. <clears throat> I'm, I'm sorry, Sophie, for this depressing rambling. I just... You're the only one I feel comfortable talking with about this stuff, because you're not here to judge me. And even if you were here, I know you still wouldn't. There's nothing I can do right now. I don't want to feel sorry for myself to evoke pity from others, but... What else can I really do? <sighs> the view of the forest is amazing from up here. Especially at this time of the day. The sun sinking behind the tree line as the clouds glow pink in the orange sky. All you can hear is the insects and the birds. It's peaceful. It's beautiful. Someone like me doesn't deserve this view, though. You should be here instead. 
you'd know what to do. You always know what to do. God, I sound so stupid. I shouldn't be getting personal. Whatever. It's not like Beatley's going to listen to these anyway, probably. I'm going to do something. I don't know what or how, but I will. Even if it means losing my dream job to spend more time here. These people need help. And yes, they're getting their help from, you know, federal sources and officials and trained professionals, but damn it, I'm going to help. Somehow. <laughs> Some way. <sighs> Sorry. Thanks, Sophie. I'm sorry. For everything. For me. But... I'm going... to do better. I promise. Not to you, or to me. But I promise... to these people... Martin Holloway.